1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 12. All right, we'll do it old school congregation. Do y'all have it? Those of you who have it, uh, let's read and we'll give them an opportunity to catch up with us. Uh, the word of the Lord reads, In that day I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Hallelujah, somebody. We're drawing our th topic from that last clause. Uh, when I begin, I will also make an end. The God of completion. Look at somebody and tell them, when God begins a thing, he'll also complete it. Come on, find somebody and tell them, when God begins a thing, he's also completed. Now lay your hand on your own head and make this pronouncement. Whatever God has begun in my life, it shall be completed. Come on, you said it half-heartedly. Said with some conviction this time. Whatever God has begun in my life, He will also complete it. Father God, we exalt Your name. We declare Your Lordship. As we turn our attention to Your Word, we ask that You would speak to us, and that You would do it in a way that is undeniably God. Touch our ears that we would hear, our minds that we would understand, our hearts that we would receive, and our wills. That we will set ourselves to do your word and we will give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. We bind up anything that would oppose and hinder your purposes today. We command it to loose in the name of the Lord. And we release the spirit of the Lord for you have said where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It is in your great name that we pray. You may take your seat in the house of the Lord. The God of completion. We began this message uh, for our New Year's Eve service, and we did so uh, to uh, release into the atmosphere something that, that I believe God is speaking uh, to us. And we began to draw on this word from the Lord, from the significance uh, of the numbers involved in the year 2020. I shared with you that neurologically, uh, 20 means uh, the completion of a waiting period, the completion of a, a waiting period. Uh, so if we just pull on the symbolic meaning of the number 20, it conveys that whatever you have been waiting on, you are at the completion of that waiting period. That there is something that God has released in the atmosphere where that waiting period is over. Now you draw significance from that for your own life. Maybe you have been praying and waiting, praising and waiting, believing and waiting, standing and waiting. However it is you have been waiting, I believe prophetically that God has released something to where that waiting period, if you've been faithful, that waiting period has about to come to an end. So, so 20 carries the significance of the completion of a waiting period. The number 24 uh, it carries the meaning of completeness. I'll come back to that again because we're revealing visiting this concept of complete, completeness, but also divine order, completeness, but also divine order. So I shared with you, number one, the significance of the number 2024, the year 2024, is that there is a double annunciation of the word complete, resulting in a return to divine order. A double annunciation. What's a double annunciation? It's when God says something twice. When God says something twice, it's called a double annunciation. And when God says something twice, he is emphasizing the significance of what he is saying. When God says something twice, it means that God is about to release something significant. Whether it is a double blessing, whether it is a double portion, whether it is a double outcome. Pouring. When God says something twice, he is double annunciating. So we have in the year 2020 a double annunciation of the word complete and the concept of a return to, to divine order. I don't know about you, but I am still waiting for a complete return to order. COVID threw everything out of order. Two hurricanes in Florida since 2017 has thrown everything out of order. 
I'm still waiting for a complete return to divine order. I believe in my spirit the significance of 2024 is a release of an anointing to complete every uncompleted thing in your life and also a return to a divine order. Somebody say amen. So we have that double annunciation, that complete return to the divine order. I shared with you that this, uh, this uh, unction, uh, 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 this conviction isn't built completely on numerology. I believe the numerology supports it. But number two, it, 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 it's, ble- it's built also on the nature of God. The nature of God. Number two, I told you that God is a completer. It's in his nature. Help me talk to to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, God is a completer. It's in his nature. Let me tell you something. Anybody who starts a thing in the name of God and does not complete that thing, they have lied on God. Did we just not read where God said, if I begin a thing, I'll end it. There's not one thing God ever started and never completed. Sometimes it might take some time, but whatever it is, God starts, God completes because it is in his nature. That's why he said, when I I begin a thing. I told you in that first Samuel chapter three, verse 11 verse, the word thing, this blesses me, grab this and we'll get to the new material. The word thing literally means something that will blow your mind. Look at somebody and tell them, get ready for God to do something that'll blow your mind. You know why people get religious? You know why people fall into ritual? You know why people fall into habit? Because they get so used to doing the same thing in the name of God, the same thing in the name of God. They show up and they sit in the same places. They show up and they sing the same songs. They show up and there's never a disruption of the liturgy of the, of the, of the service. In other words, God never disrupts what's going on and people begin to do and expect the same thing. But I believe God is saying the day of the same thing is over for those who will receive me into their lives I'm gonna do some things in this season that will blow your mind I I don't know about you I don't know about you but I got some things I need God to just blow my mind up What kind of dimension, what kind of realm are you entering in for God to blow your mind? Well, I believe we can find it in a couple of places. I believe in Jeremiah. Jeremiah says, call on me and I'll show you great things that you have never even thought of. Tell somebody and tell them, get ready for God to show you some things you've not thought of. Yeah, lay your little project plan out. Yes, set your goals. But that's all stuff you thought of. I hear God saying there's some things that's not on your project plan. There's some goals that you have not set. I'm going to move in your life. I'm going to blow your Shake somebody and tell them, get ready for God to blow your mind. And I invite God to show up in our worship service. I invite God to disrupt the praise, disrupt the worship. I wouldn't mind right now if God told her just shut me down and dropped his spirit in this place and began to drop the Holy Ghost on some folk and just blow our mind. Somebody holler, blow my mind, God. The kind of stuff where the Apostle Paul says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard the things that God has in store for them. I thank God that the things we expect, our eyes see and our ears hear, but I want to step over into that dimension where my eyes see some things I have not even thought nor have I heard. Do I have one witness in here? Do I have one somebody who will come into agreement with the preacher and say, hey, God, I want that too. If I'm talking to you, throw your hands up and say, hey, God, I blow my mind. I, I want that too. Tell somebody to tell him it's in his nature. Yeah, it means blow your mind. It means get your attention. It means to shake some things up. Hallelujah, somebody. And then I told you, number three, completing is vital to who God is. And then we're going to get into some new stuff. It's vital to who God is. Not just in his nature, but it's vital to who he, he is. Amen, somebody. He wouldn't be God if he didn't complete. 
And we see it in things that God says about himself. For instance, God says, I'm Alpha and Omega. That's the completion of the alphabet. He says, I am the beginning and the end. That's the completion of anything. He says, I am the first and the last. That's an idea of completion. He says, I am the author and the finisher. Of your faith. Of your faith walk. I'm the author. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me talk to somebody up in here who, who feels like their life is out of control, who feels like things aren't going the way you need it to go, who feels like everything is coming against you. Let me tell you something. When you are God's, he is the author of your life. What do I mean by that? I mean that God is writing the script of your life. Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. I mean God is writing the script of your life. God started the script, and God will end the script. Your haters and your enemies and the devil can't do nothing but read the script. They do not control. They can't do nothing but read the script and try to anticipate where it's going. They can't do nothing but read the script and try to disrupt the script. But they can't disrupt, disrupt the script of my life because my Bible tells me no weapon form shall. Somebody holler, God is the author of my life. And I told you, and I'm going to keep it moving. I told you, I told you, stop putting periods where commas belong. Something happened in your life, oh, Lord, I'm going to die. Something happened in your life, oh, Lord, I'm not going to make it. Something happened in your life, oh, Lord, I'm going to give up. You put in periods. You put in periods where God intended for there to be a comma. A period means that's the end of that thought. That's the end of that concept. A comma means don't freak out. There's more to come. Tell somebody to tell them, don't freak out, there's more to come. <laughs> Your rent's late, don't freak out, there's more to come. You got a bad doctor's report, don't freak out, there's more to come. It's just a comma because the old folks said, God will pick you up and turn you around and set your feet on solid ground. Somebody said he may not come when you want him, but he's what? Touch somebody and tell him he's an on-time God. Look at somebody and tell him, say, I don't know what you're going through, baby, but it's just a comma. I, 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 I told you, I told you, wherever you got a comma, you ought to just pause right now and give God a praise. Let the devil know I'm going to praise God because this is subject to change. Sometime between midnight and sunrise, it's subject to change. Sometime between midnight and daybreak, it's, it's just a karma. All right. All right. So the only question is, not will God do a thing, the only question is, did he start it? Not, not will he do it. He said, if I begin it, I'll do it. The question is, did he start it? That's the question you need to ask yourself. Every good idea you get, is God starting this? Because God don't necessarily finish good ideas. God finishes God ideas. Every good idea ain't God. Don't mean it's the devil. Could just be a good idea from you. But you want to make certain God blesses it. God endorses it. Because if he didn't start it, he's not obligated to finish it. That's why some things are heavier than what they need to be. Because if God didn't start it, there's no grace for you to carry it. If God didn't start it, there's no mercy for you to bear it. If God didn't start it, there might be some 
some success, but it won't be good success. Because the Bible says that God's success, good success comes without sorrow. That, no, no, sorrow don't mean it'll be absent difficulty. Sorrow means, without sorrow means, in spite of the difficulty, you still glad. In spite of the difficulty, you still got joy. In spite of the difficulty, there's no quit on the inside of you because you got too much God in you to quit. And it's got too much God on it to quit. I'd have gave up on ministry a long time ago if God didn't start it. I wish I had one good witness up in here. I would have not only had the thought to give some folk a piece of my mind, I'd have given them all my mind if there wasn't grace to carry the stuff. I got to carry it. So of all y'all who have so kindly empathized with me, and said things like, man, I don't know how you do it. This is how I got the grace to carry it. I got the mercy to carry I, Sometimes I don't want to now. Sometimes I want to cast it off. I ain't going to lie to you now. But after I calm down, like Jesus, like the joy that's set before me, I endure what I got to endure to get to where God is taking us. And it's the same with you. That's why no matter how many times you have purposed in yourself, you just ain't going to take it no more. You're going to walk away from all this stuff. And you're so sick of people. And you just want, you just want your life back. And you don't want all this burden. And you don't want all this ministry. And you just, and you just, and you go through your whole little pity pat. And then there you go showing up being faithful all over again. Look at somebody tell me he's giving me the grace to carry it. Grace, you don't even want. Isn't that something? I got to go. I don't know why I'm settled here. Isn't that something? He give you grace sometimes you don't even want. To carry what he's called you to carry. All right, all right, all right. Y'all, I just preached on uh, watch night. And y'all shout it again like you ain't never heard none of it before. But now watch this. Somebody said it takes better double. Okay, praise God. All right, let me at least give you some new stuff today. All right, watch this now. I threw this concept of double enunciation out there, right? Watch this. Please grab this. Please grab this. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. Number five. God not only double enunciates complete, God double enunciates himself. Let me say it again. Let me show you. He not only double enunciates complete, place an emphasis on it. He's going to do something special. He double enunciates himself. Uh, uh, turn with me to Isaiah chapter 46 and 9. Okay. Are y'all ready? Read with me. He says, remember the former things of, oh, watch this. He says, for I am God and there's none else. I am God and there's none like. God double enunciates him. He didn't have to say, I am God, but one time. But he said, I am God twice. There is a double enunciation of himself. Whenever God double enunciates himself, he's looking to build some faith in you. Whenever God double enunciates himself, he is double enunciating his person. He's double enunciating his presence. He's double enunciating the manifestation of his glory. He's double enunciating his intent to pour out his spirit. 
What I want you to get ready for, grab this please, is for there to be a double annunciation of the presence of God in your life. Y'all ain't hearing me. Listen, get over yourself. Get over your self-righteousness. Get over the fact that because you can quote a few scripture, you feel like you are more spiritual than somebody else. Get over the fact that you feel like you are so special and gifted, amen, and that you, 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 you just stand out. Get over all of that because if you can't get over all of that, you can't get your double manifestation of the presence of God. God is saying, I got a new revelation for you and it's going to be heavier than the one you are walking in. God is saying, I got a new outpouring for you, and it's going to be heavier. And the anointing is going to be thicker than what you are currently walking in. God is saying, I got a new revelation for you. It's going to be deeper than what you are walking in. But you can't receive it if you hold on to what you always got and think that that's what makes you special. Oh, some of y'all don't like that. The thing that keeps people from receiving a deeper revelation of God is the revelation they all wear to have. That's why generations miss God. There's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Oh, this is the move of God. This is the wave of God. And we hold on to that move. We hold on to that wave. Amen. But God doesn't bask in past glory. The Bible teaches us that God moves from glory to glory. So while you are in a move of God, you got to be sensitive to the spirit of God so you can catch the wave of the next move. Mark my words. Mark my words. There will be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There will be a new wave of God. There will be a heavier revelation of God. I don't care who gets cynical. I don't care who gets caught doing what. I don't care who gets accused of doing what. I don't care who turned back from God. God is not man that he should lie. I'm here to tell you for those who are discerning and their eyes are on Jesus, there's going to be a manifestation of of his presence because God is real let man be lie and God be true he says twice I'm God I'm God there is a double annunciation he says I'm God I'm God there is is a double annunciation. I speak into those into your life, those of you who has an ear to hear and a spirit open to receive. I speak a double annunciation into your life over every problem. He's saying, I'm God, there's none like me. Over every setback, he is saying, I'm God, there's none like me. Over every disappointment, he is saying, I am God, there's none like me. Over every delay, every denial, every sickness, every disease, God is saying, I am God. I am God to every stubborn devil, every stubborn demon, every stubborn predicament that don't want to seem to move or be broken to every curse that keeps passing in your family line. God is stepping up and saying, I've had enough of this. Let me remind you who I am. I am God. I am God. Somebody say he is God. He is God. He said, there's none like me. There's none like me. There's none like me. There's none like me. I don't care what other deities they name. I don't care whatever cults they follow. There's none like God. I feel the Holy Ghost. There's none like Jehovah. There's none like Elohim. There's none like El Shaddai. There's none like Jesus. Do I have a witness up in here? This is a democracy. Believe what you want to believe. But I'm here to testify there is none like the Lord. If there's none like him, none can stand against him. 
If there's none like him, none can stand. People trip out the system this and the world this. Like the system and the world can stand against God. I wish I had a witness up in here. There is none like him. The world is going to be the world. I wish I had a witness up in here. We let people manipulate us to hate. We let people manipulate us to be intolerant. We let people manipulate us to be self-righteous and judgmental when God has not called us to be any of those things. If you rest in the knowledge of who he is, that there is none like him. Who they are don't change God. But who God is can change anybody who wants to change, including you. Look at somebody and tell them there's none like him. There's none like him. <laughs> Didn't the song say I look high and I look low, but I found nobody? I found nobody, nobody greater. I got some witnesses in here, and I don't even know if I get any farther than this today. I got some witnesses in here. You look high, you look low, you found nobody. You looked in a bottle, you found nobody. You looked in a needle, you found nobody. You looked in a tube, you found nobody. You looked in a relationship, you found nobody great. Somebody tell me there's none greater, and there's nobody like him. I dare you to put your hands together and tell him there's nobody like you, Lord. Oh, y'all patty caking. I'm saying some things that ought to bring a deep praise up out of you. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's nobody greater. There's no circumstance greater. There is no setback greater. There is no problem greater. There's no health issue greater. I wish I had a witness. There is nobody and nothing greater than the God we serve. There is none like him. So I double announce his presence in your life. I say he is God. He is God. Over every curse, setback, disappointment, he is God. I got to go. I got to go. I dare you to just walk in your home and just speak. He's God. He's God. I dare you lay your bills out on the table and just speak and say, he's God. He's God. I dare you to get that doctor's report, open it up, look at what they say and say, he's God. He's God. Stop arguing and curse your children and because they're going their own way. Next time they pass by, you just say, he's God. He's God. Husbands and wives, stop arguing with each other and running each other down and talking about each other and calling each other devils. The devil is a liar. Just look at each other and say, he's God. He's God. Look at him and say, 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 he's God. Look at all and say, he's God. Look at him and say, he's God. And by the time you get through declaring the presence of God, you won't be mad anymore. You won't be fighting anymore. You'll start praising God together. Because he's God. You know how to pray with me up in here? Let me get y'all the rest of this point. We got to take the communion. And i take this over to next week if I have to. There's none like him. There's none like him. Nothing can stand against him. Watch this now. If there's none like him and nothing can stand against you, and if you're standing with God, whatever stands against you, standing against God. Be careful. Be careful who you talk about. Be careful whose name you put in your mouth. Be careful who you run down. They might be standing with God. If they're standing with God, God might be standing with them. And don't think because you know something about people, God ain't with him. I wish I had a witness up in here. Uh, because, because, because God still stood with David when David was wrong. And God wouldn't let nobody touch David. God said, David is mine. And if I got to judge him, I judge him. But I'm not going to let you touch him. He don't belong to you. My anointing is still on his life. I'll deal with him in Bathsheba. Let me take care of David. But don't 
don't you lay a hand on him. You had better be careful who you put your mouth on because you think you know something about them. I ain't got nothing to say. Don't ask me about nothing. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. I ain't got nothing to say. If I thought the hand of God was on the person because they blessed me before I found out something about them, now I done found out something about them, and I'm going to conclude the hand of God ain't on them. Well, what about all those messages that blessed me? What about all those things that got me through my darkest hour? What about all those things that kept me from blowing my head off? What about all those things that got me delivered and set free? God wasn't on none of that. Y'all better be careful. And I ain't agreeing with nothing nobody may have or may not done. All I'm saying is that don't mean God ain't with them. Because if God's standing with you, who's standing against you? Standing against God. Because he said, touch not my anointed. And do my prophets know. Whatever attacks you is attacking God. God, I got to wrap this up. That's why God told Jehoshaphat, you need not fight in this battle. Y'all fighting some battles you don't even have to fight in. That's why you're tired. That's why you're exhausted. That's why you beat up. You choosing to fight something you shouldn't be fighting in. Notice he said you don't need to fight. Now, if you want to, go ahead. But you don't need to. And I got too old to be fighting battles I don't need to fight. That's why I don't respond to everything everybody say about me. I ain't got time to be fighting them battles. I learned a long time ago that they don't tell me who I am. The Lord tells me who I am. I can't respond to everything everybody got to say about me. It's exhausting. Some of y'all can't sleep right now at night. Fighting battles you, you, you don't have to fight in. Lord told Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles 20, 17, you don't need to fight in this battle. What you need to do is set yourself. What you need to do is stand still. What you need to do is open your eyes and see the salvation of God. So you can fight or you can set yourself, stand still, and see. I don't know about you. 2024, I have chosen to set myself. That means I ain't going to let you and your opinion move me. That means I'm going to stand still. I'm going to stand still and say, God, say move. I'm not going to let the situation move me. I'm not going to let people move me. I'm going to stand right here until God say move. And I'm going to open up my eyes. And God says, you're going to see salvation. You're going to see my deliverance. You're going to see my breakthrough. You're going to see my victory. I tell y'all one more thing before I send you home. I tell y'all one more thing. Y'all got, you got the capacity and endurance for it. He double enunciates himself. He says, "I am God. I am God." Watch this, and I'm done. We'll catch it next week. He not only double enunciates himself, but what does he double enunciate about himself? Hey, God, help me, Holy Ghost. When he says, I am God, I am God, what is he double enunciating? Watch this. The word God in that text where he says, I am God, I am God is the Hebrew prefix L, E-L. And that Hebrew prefix L means almighty. Yes, 
So God is double enunciating, I'm the Almighty. I am L. Almighty simply means he has all might. There is no might that exists that he does not have. There is no might that exists that he does not have. Uh, demons, devils, people, government, circumstances, problems might have some might. But none of them have all might. None of them are L. God says, I am L. I've got all might. Only God is the Almighty. Watch this now. I'm going to send you home. That, that, that is why so many of the biblical names of God start with the prefix L. Uh, let me run you through a few and then I'll back up and comment. Is that all right? Elohim. Mm -hmm. He's Elohim. He's, he's El Roy. I. He's El Shaddai. He's El Elyon. He's El, El Olam. All of these names of God starts with the prefix L. Now let me back up and talk to you a little bit and I'll send you home. So when he says he is the almighty, he is Elohim. He's the almighty God, Elohim, almighty God who keeps covenant. Keeping covenant means keep my word. So God is saying, I am Elohim. I'm the almighty. I keep my word. In other words, he's saying, if I give you my word, I'm mighty enough to keep my word. Y'all ain't praying with me. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Watch this. Why is that important? Because the first name God introduces us to in the Bible, in the book of Genesis chapter 1, he uses the name Elohim, I believe it's 31 times. Whenever it says the Lord, it's Elohim. Lord God, it's Elohim. And why does God use Elohim to introduce himself to us for? Why does he use the name, I'm the mighty God who keeps his word? In other words, God is saying, you're going to read some things in this book. It might be kind of hard to believe. You're going to read some things in this book. Your rational mind is going to try to explain away. So the first thing I want you to understand about me, if I said, I'm mighty enough to do it. So that the first name God uses to introduce himself. If God says it, I'm telling somebody, get ready for it to happen because God is Elohim. He's the mighty God who keeps his word. Like Sarah and Abraham, it might take 14 years to give birth to your promise, but get ready for God to do it. He'll keep his word. It took Joseph 13 years from the time he was sold into slavery to become the prince of Egypt, but God kept his word. It took Israel 40 years of wandering in the wilderness before they entered into the promise but God kept his word it took David 15 years from the time they poured oil on his head to the time they set the crown on his head but God kept his word it took 14 generations from Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 where Jesus is prophesied to the coming of the Messiah in the gospel but guess what God kept his word because he is Elohim what has God told you? How long has it taken? I'm here to tell you there's a double annunciation. He is the Almighty, and God will He'll keep his word. Don't give up on the word that God has spoken. He'll keep his word. Don't let the delay cause you to doubt. He will keep his word. Work. Don't let what sounds like a denial, which is a not yet, cause you to believe that God is not going to do it. Sometimes it's so big, it takes some time. Because God is preparing you for the manifestation of his word. He's Elohim. He's El Roy I. E-L-R-O-I. What does that mean? He's the mighty God who sees he sees. Look at somebody tell me, say, he sees you. Mm -hmm. When no one else sees you, he sees. He really do see you. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. This is for somebody. He really do see you. 
Sometimes you can pass through life and you just feel like you're invisible. You can just sit up in a crowd of people and just feel like you're by yourself, like nobody see you. Some of y'all are carrying so much pain, you just want somebody to see your pain. You don't want to tell them. You just want them to see it. You want them to just empathize with you. And sometimes it feels like nobody sees how much you are hurting. Well, I came to tell you today, he is El Roy I. He sees you. He sees your circumstances. He sees the intent of your heart. He he sees your mental and emotional state. He sees your private worship and your private prayers. He sees when folks are lying on you and hating on you and trying to block your blessings. And he is El Roy I and he sees you. And not only does he see you, he's mad enough to do something about it. He's El Elyon. E L E L Y O N. He's the mighty most high God. The mighty most high God. Y'all grab me. Grab this. Grab this. God don't never pull. Well, no, 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 I can't say that that way. Let me say it. Grab this. The end result of God moving in your life is never going to be to drag you down. Now, I'm going to tell you why I paused. Because sometimes if you have to bring you down to lift you up, he'll bring you down to lift you up. But the end result of God moving you in your life is never going to be to drag you. Because he's the most high. If we walk with God the way we're supposed to walk with God, the devil can't keep us down. Because he's the most high. If you walk with God, it'll elevate your thinking. If you walk with God, it'll elevate your mindset, your spirit. It's too many Christians claiming to walk with God and you got stinking thinking. How you walk with God and you always negative nanny? How you walk with God and you can't see the positive in nothing? How you walk with God when you can't believe things going to work out? Some folk who say they're walking with God ain't walking with God. They lying on God. He's the most high God. A most high God elevates you and lifts you. And he's mighty enough to do it. Last one. You can go home. After we do the communion. <laughs> he's L-O-L-A-M. E-L-O-L-A-M. God. That means he's the almighty, watch this, everlasting God. <laughs> Bible says he's from everlasting to everlasting. That means that he never runs out. That means he never ends. He never expires. He never gives up. He never quits. He never stops being who he is because he is everlasting. He never stops being omnipotent. He never stops being omniscient. He, 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 he never stops being omnipresent. He never stops being love. He never stops being holy. He never stops being just. He never runs out. He's everlasting. You need to grab a hold of that because I want you to leave this place with the admonition 2024. Don't give up on God because God ain't giving up on you. He's everlasting. I want you to leave this place grabbing a hold to the truth that trouble don't last always, but God does. I want you to grab a hold of the truth because he's everlasting. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. 
I want you to get it in your spirit that because you are a child and a follower of God, you're like that ever ready, ever ready bunny, that little pink bunny with the drum that just keeps going and going and going and going. You need to develop an everlasting praise. You need to develop an everlasting prayer life. You need to develop some everlasting worship. What does that mean? You'll be like David where you say, I bless the Lord at all times. I don't care what I go through. I got an everlasting praise. If I am hurting, I will praise the Lord. If I got setbacks and disappointments, I will praise the Lord. There is no end to my praise and my worship. I don't care what is going on in my life because my God is an everlasting God. And I got to give him an everlasting praise. I wish I had a witness up in here. That's why David said, I bless him in my going in. I bless him in my coming out. I bless him at sunrise. I bless him at sunset. I bless him when things are good. I bless him when things are bad. I've determined that I bless the Lord. And shake somebody and say all times. All times. All times. All times. All times. My praise is everlasting. Oh, talk about me. I'm not going to respond. I'm going to praise the Lord. Let trouble come up against me. I'm going to praise the Lord. God wants to develop an everlasting praise. He wants you to develop everlasting worship. And he wants you to develop everlasting prayers. Because the Bible says the prayers of the righteous availed much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the God of completion manifest himself in your life. May there be a double annunciation of the presence of God in your life in 2024. Why don't you stand to your feet if you're able while I pray a blessing over you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we release this word not as another sermon. We release this word not as another teaching. We release this word as a prophetic utterance. We release this word as a prophetic declaration, as a prophetic decree. We know that there is a lot going on in this world, and it looks like it is going to hell in a bread basket. But we declare you are the God of completion. And everything that you have started in your people corporately, everything you've started in your people individually, if we look to the hills from which cometh our help, you will complete it. Every person present, every person present has had or have a dream. Every person present has had a vision. Every person present has had a goal. And many have run up against obstacles and setbacks and disapproval and everything hadn't gone the way they thought it was going to go because they thought that because you were in it, it was going to be easy. They didn't see the long game. They didn't see that sometimes it, you, you take the time to prepare the circumstance, the situation, and to prepare us so that you can bring it to completion. So everything we have abandoned that's been of you, God, we revisit it in the name of Jesus. Every vision plan, every hope, every dream, we re vision it. And we say, God, that, that this is a year to complete it. And we speak divine order. Everything, the atmosphere, everything, the world, everything, the pandemic, everything, the storms have thrown out of order. We say you are God, you are God. COVID don't have the last word over the ordering of your church. Storms don't have the last word over the blessings of your people. You are ill. And we release you. We release you. And we call for divine reordering in relationships, in relationships, in husbands and wives and children a divine reordering and finances let there be discipline and good decision making divine reordering heavenly father in ministry let it be 
for you are the author and the finisher. You are the everlasting God. And you have the final word. If you receive this prayer over your life for this year, come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a high praise.